this is it. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Right. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The title of the presentation that um, I'm going to give you uh, this afternoon is Aging and the Immune System. And the question to it, should we actually store a representative sample of our immune systems uh, for use in later life? And in order to provide that presentation, I want to go over the, the, the presentation in, in four parts, really. First, to give a, a basic introduction to the immune system, and then to uh, talk to you about the, uh, the effects of the immune system, uh, or the effects of age on the immune system. And then thirdly, to show how the immune system is modified or boosted in immunotherapeutic paradigms to pr treat chronic viral infections and cancer. <clears throat> and the, uh, thirdly, or sorry, rather fourthly, to let you consider whether or not you think it might be appropriate for us at a time when we are fit and well to consider actually storing a representative sample of our immune systems uh, for use at some time in the future. So to the first part then, the immune system. The immune system itself, uh, as perhaps many of us in here are aware, is, is essentially a collection of a number of different mechanisms which are there specifically to protect the body. They protect the body from uh, in, uh, invading disease causing, causing organisms or pathogens, those being a selection of bacteria, parasites, fungus, virus, uh, toxins, foreign bodies, and, and also proteins. And also as part of the immune system, the immune system itself has a surveillance mechanism to identify abnormal cells, abnormal cells such as cancer cells. Now the immune system itself can be classified into two different groupings. The first group being the innate immune system, that's what we're essentially born with, and that can act immediately to defend the body. And then secondly, we have a, a second adaptive immune system, and that's where we learn or acquire our immunity over time. And this adaption provides for immunological memory. Now the innate immune system comprises skin, essentially, it uh, excludes pathogens from entering the body, and it's, of course it's very important that we have good quality skins to keep ourselves in good shape. In addition to the, the skin, we have the cilia, of the mucous membranes, the lungs, for example, which uh, act to remove airborne pathogens and dust from, from uh, inside our bodies. We also have secretions such as tears, nasal and other secretions, and, and saliva, which contain specific uh, enzymes which are able to destroy bacteria and also inhibit viral uh, penetration of cells. <coughs> In conjunction with these, these two areas, we've, we've also got phagocytic cells. Those are cells of the body which comprise neutrophils, macrophages, which are engulf bacteria and, and foreign proteins and try and break them up to destroy their effectiveness uh, or their pathogenic effects against the body. And also these specialized cells called dendritic cells, which actually uh, take in the, uh, the pathogen and split it up into pieces and then at some time are able to present those pieces to the other parts of the immune system to provide for an adaptive immune response. Finally, we also have the natural killer cell population, and this is a particularly important cell population as it readily goes around identifying early stage uh, tumorigenic changes in cells and is able to specifically kill tumor or considered <coughs> abnormal cells. As I've mentioned to you, the, um, uh, the two parts to the immune system is the innate part, that's what we're born with, and also the very powerful, the adaptive immune system. And the adaptive immune system <coughs> is actually created by the innate immune cells, as I mentioned, the dendritic cells, presenting uh, pathogens or breakdown products of pathogens to B lymphocytes and to T lymphocytes in early stages. It presents them to them to activate that part of uh, the adaptive immune system. So the adaptive immune system could be said to comprise specifically the B lymphocytes, which produce antibodies against the pathogen, and also T cells, which have a cell-mediated response against cells which become infected with a pathogen, like a virus, or a cell-mediated response against tumor cells. 
if we consider the, the immune system as a whole then, we know that the, uh, the uh, stem cells within the bone marrow are actually the progenitors of the immune cell system. They produce the B and T cells in particular of the adaptive immune system. They also produce the cells of the innate immune system. We know that the thymus here plays a particularly important part in uh, maturing the T cells which derive, or uh, the early T cell progenitor cells which derive from the bone marrow. And the thymus um, processes them, if you like, to become mature uh, T cells which are then capable of recognizing and destro destroying uh, infected and tumor cells. The B cells remain within the bone and they differentiate within the bone marrow to produce uh, mature B cells which are capable of producing antibodies. And <clears throat> both the T and B cells circulate throughout the blood system continuously and they tend to, to build up within the lymph nodes. They circulate more slowly within the lymph nodes where they look uh, mainly for more uh, for where pathogens are to actually fight and, uh, and attack specifically those pathogens. <coughs> So, in the development of immunological memory then, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we see that B cells and T cells recognize a pathogen and that they attack that pathogen and then they replicate as they're attacking, producing many daughter cells. So they produce many cells which are identical to the first set of cells, which builds up, if you like, that army of individual cells capable of recognizing and destroying that pathogen. <coughs> Now, after the pathogen has been destroyed, the majority of those cells fall back or die off, and we're left with a series of uh, cells which become so-called long-term memory cells. They're cells which uh, reside after a, 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 an infection, for example, and they remain in the system to, be, uh, to respond once again should that same pathogen occur later in life. So, again, should the, the pathogen be detected again later in life, the memory cells are able to uh, provide a much more rapid and more powerful response. And what happens here then is that the secondary responses that one sees are often, as a consequence of there being memory cells, subclinical. You don't even know that you've had a flu virus that you've, you did have once 10 years ago because it's, a, it's, it's actually been taken out well before you actually end up uh, getting the disease process. So the, the these secondary responses, if you like, are rapidly destroyed by the memory cells that you build up uh, as, you, as you age. So then in the development of immunological memory, <clears throat> we see that if we have a first exposure to a particular pathogen, then we have a very significant initial response whereby we have antibody-producing cells and effector T cells, cytotoxic T cells, which rapidly divide and, uh, and respond against, for example, an influenza virus and try to destroy that, that virus and virally infected cells. And over a period of time, we gradually uh, lose the clinical presentation of that influenza and we come back to a period down here where we're quite normal again. But what's happened is that we've built up a so-called protective immunity from a further uh, attack by that or reinfection, such that if we are reinfected with the same virus, for example, then we have an immediate, very rapid response and the response that protects us is at a subclinical level. You don't even know that you've been attacked. You just don't recognize it because your immune system has already been trained to, to modify and destroy it. What can happen later on in life, of course, is that that immune system is still there because the memory cells last for decades. But sometimes, and I'll explain a little bit why, uh, later why, we actually lose uh, the strength of that response and as a consequence, we might see a mild or perhaps inapparent infection. So what happens then to our immune system uh, as we age? Well, what we do know is that the capacity for the renewal of our immune cells uh, reduces as we move through to middle age, between, well, from about 40 onwards, essentially. We know that if we look through all of the studies and we, 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 you know, which have been done over the last 10 to 20 years, we know that the replicative activity of the stem cells within the barren, bone marrow is significantly reduced at around this time. Furthermore, we know that the stem cells, if we wish to mobilize them for, uh, for reasons of, uh, of therapy, the stem cells to, to be mobilized from the bone marrow, the capacity for that is significantly reduced once we reach the ages of between 40 and 50. There's also a reduction in lymphopoiesis, lymphopoiesis being the ability of these stem cells to be uh, converted or to 
differentiating to lymphocytes of B and T cell lineage.